Good morning, guys. Heather here. I just kind of wanted to share with you what was on my heart a little bit. Um, this past weekend, God has really been working with me. He's been revealing things to me about myself. And, um, you know, when God reveals things to you about yourself, he does it in love. He always does it um, not to show you your faults and not to make you feel like a bad person because God never sees you the way you see you. Like when God points out a flaw to you, he's not saying, I see that flaw in you as you. He's just saying, I see this as something we need to get rid of because that's not how I designed you to be. But it's so easy when God tells you and reveals things to you to go in the opposite direction. Instead of feeling convicted and getting like a fire under your butt and being like, yeah, I'm going to fight for God. I know sometimes for me, I feel condemned. I feel like beating myself up. I feel like punishing myself. And really, that's not very Christian-like at all. And it is not of God because God doesn't want you to beat yourself up. What good does that do? One, all that does is keep your eye and your your brain focused on the problem, you know. And two, it brings you down. I mean, it just tears you apart. You, you cannot live feeling like you're just a horrible person, you know. You just have to sometimes learn how to accept the things God has told you about yourself as true, but not as an everlasting impression that you now have to live under. Over the weekend, God revealed to me that um, I'm angry. I'm angry. Um, I'm angry about you know, all sorts of things. Just the past 10 years of my life, after graduating college, nothing went down the way I thought they would. Now, I did not plan anything, okay? So I am not going to say nothing went the way I planned because that's not true. Just nothing went the way I thought it would. Life was not so simple. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I graduated from college, got married, had kids, had a house, blah, blah, blah. You know, simple is as simple does. No, it was complicated, you know, got into a really bad relationship, really bad choices. Lots of things have happened. And I've just been building up this ball of anger inside of me, you know, like, this isn't fair. Why do I have to deal with this? How am I going to trust people again? Just all of the feelings that come with anger. And I realized I had been taking them out on Nick, you know, blaming him for my unhappiness, blaming him for everything that has gone wrong. And although he has made some bad choices, so have I. And at the end of the day, the way we choose to feel is a choice and we don't have to let our emotions run us. I'm really trying to learn and grasp this because I want to be a woman of God that isn't moved um, every time my car breaks down or a woman of God that isn't moved every time Nick tells me he has to work later than he's supposed to. I want to be a woman of God who isn't moved when I lose my job, when, you know, I look out in front of me and I can't see how it's going to get done. I, I want to be the woman of God that stands firm and isn't shook so easily. So once I accepted that God told me, okay, you got this anger, you got to let it go. Once I stopped beating myself up over, I realized, you know, wow, I am angry. That's what's making me unhappy. That's what's making me feel stressed. That's what's making everything seem so hard. So then last night we um, were listening to a message and... <laughs> The, the the verse that he preached on was just I felt like it was just for us it was it was just exactly what I needed to hear when I needed to hear it and I want to share it with you because I know we all are going through something something of some sort right and it can consume us and it can be all that we can think about sometimes and it can drag us down and we can love God with all of our hearts yet we'll still worry about things and yet we'll still fret and I was reminded last night that when we really love God and we really have faith in God you know there's no need to fret and sweat over everything you know so I'm just going to read this to you it's Isaiah 40 1 through 5 it says comfort for God's people Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So beautiful, so powerful. First of all, God is bringing comfort to his people. That's the first thing he wants to say. It's like, comfort them. He's telling Isaiah, comfort my people. You know, they, I think they just had like gotten destroyed by Babylon and their city was in ruins. They had rubble everywhere. Like buildings were still on fire. And I feel like that's kind of where I'm at in my life. Like we finally got this place to live. We've, we've overcome a lot, but there's still like smoldering buildings kind of laying around. The pieces haven't been put back together yet. Right? And God says, but that's okay. Find comfort. Find comfort here. Because the warfare is done. Your sins have been paid for, right? Which we know for a fact our sins have been paid for due to Jesus Christ dying on the cross. Amen. Right? And it says that, um, you know, she's received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. It's just beautiful. It's like God just saying, you know, don't worry. It's still messy. Yeah, you messed up. You messed up. But I'm going to bless you back. I'm going to take that hole in your heart and I'm not going to only fill it up, but I am going to fill it up double time so that you not only have a full heart, but you have an over full heart so that you can be full of the Lord and share with others, like be full in yourself and full enough to share with others. I mean, double for our sins. I, I mean, how awesome is God that he is going to take the time to make up and fill in all the holes and gaps that we've created with our sin. And then it goes on to say, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. One thing as a Christian, God uses um, the, uh, sorry, the, um, I'm losing my mind. He uses the analogy of the wilderness to describe when we're going through hard times because right like going into the wilderness and just like living off the land for us in this day and age is not easy it's it's like hard work for us and so what he's saying here is that you're in the wilderness you're in a hard time but a voice is calling out to make straight in the desert a highway for our God God is coming you know God is here he's already here basically you know how do you make a path for God? You praise God, right? God inhabits the praises of his people. So, you know, regardless of what it looks like, you can still look around and praise God saying, yay, you know, I know there's a smoldering building over here and my car's broken down over there and my bank account doesn't have any money, but God is good. God is good all the time, all day long, no matter what we do. It's where we focus our attention and how we focus our attention that will determine how we feel and how we handle things you know and it even goes on to say every valley shall be raised up every mountain and hill made low the rough ground shall become level and the rugged places a plain you know god wants to make your path straight he wants to take all the things that are like a mess in your life and clean them up for you but as i learned this weekend that unless we receive god with love and we hear him knowing he is not trying to condemn us but instead trying to mold us and build us into who he's created us to be and we start to let go of who we think we are it came to my mind yesterday that it's like a snake shedding its skin it's not always pretty it's not comfortable to let go of who you have known yourself to be for years and years and years and let it go you find yourself vulnerable with fresh new skin that's got no marks on it you know that you don't want to blemish up it can be scary to be that vulnerable that you've let go of everything you know to allow God to make you who he wants you to be. And I feel like that's where God has called me to be to this place where I'm vulnerable, vulnerable, I'm vulnerable. I don't know what the next move is going to be. You know, I, I'm not a thousand percent sure what God's calling is on my life, but I feel like right now I'm going through this process of getting rid of the old and making way for the new and if I can just keep my eyes on the fact that the war's over it's over it's been fought and it's been won we just have to kind of finish walking it out clean up the mess you know keep our faith in God keep our eyes up 
and the glory of God is going to, that's what it says. It says, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all the people together will see it. They'll all see it. They'll all see it. And I pray for nothing more than the, for the glory of God to shine through my life. So if I have to go through some uncomfortable moments to get rid of the junk, I know my God loves me because he told me last night, he comforted me. He heard my cries. He knew I needed a word spoken into my life. He knew I needed to be lifted up. He knew I needed to know that the fight was over. And actually, it's not that the fight is over. It's that we don't need to do the fighting. Let God fight your battles. The more I try to fight my battles, the more I lose. When I just hand them over to God, it's amazing what he does. It's amazing what he does, how quickly things change or move or shift. So I just hope today that you can find comfort in knowing that God is for you. He's not against you. You know, if you feel like there are some things that you know God is trying to show you and it's uncomfortable, just go through the uncomfortableness for just a moment. You know, I'm still uncomfortable today. You know, my car is not working. I've lost my job. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen next. And I found myself like feeling worthless based on the amount of money I make. If I have a car or not, you know, like materialistic things that don't determine my value because my identity is in Christ. My identity is not in the things that I own or the way that I want to label myself. God loves you with everything he has. He sent his son to die on the cross, not for all of us, but for each and every one of us individually, individually, individually. He wants to comfort you. And he wants to comfort me. He wants us to rest in his arms. He wants us to rest in who he has created us to be. I hope you guys have a great, blessed day.